Welcome to the best of first person episodes from Phantoms and Monsters. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. Black Cryptid Canine Observed near Chelmsford, Essex, UK I grew up in the countryside near Chelmsford in Essex, UK in 1993. We lived in a very rural area surrounded by thick woods and fields. There was a small farm down a single track road. My first encounter of this thing that I can only describe as a beast was in our garden at about 11.30pm when I was 14 years old. My stepdad had just driven back from the pub and was in the kitchen making toast, and I went down to get a drink of water. The back garden floodlight was switched to off as it was very blinding when it came on. My stepdad noticed something moving about in the garden from looking out of the window. He questioned it so I took a look, and as we tried to work out what it was he switched the floodlight on. Plain as day, this thing was on all fours drinking water from the pond. It was huge. It was black and very wide and very muscular. It turned and looked towards the house. Assuming it couldn't see us from the blinding light. I've never seen anything like it. Its face was just like a dog, but it looked fierce, and its features were very strong. Covered in thick black hair from head to toe. My stepdad and I just stood there in shock. It moved away from the pond, stood up on its back legs, and leapt over the end garden hedge. This hedge was about 10 feet tall. Then it was gone. My stepdad turned off the light and told me to get to bed. The next morning he told me that we were never to discuss what we saw again. Whenever I tried to mention it he just denied it as if it never happened. Another time I was walking my friend home across the fields past the farm barn. There was a large broken hole in the side of the barn which we had to walk past to get down the track. It was around lunchtime, so daylight. As we got closer to the barn we both noticed this animal edged inside of the barn looking out of the hole at us. It moved and I knew I'd seen it before. We both questioned it but decided to back off slowly and it moved further backwards into the barn. We walked back to my house very quickly and never went down there again. We had a few neighbors in the area who all said that they had heard weird howling noises at night, but quickly were convinced it was foxes. Having lived in the countryside, I know what foxes sound like. These howlings were not of a fox. There was one report sent to the police about an unusual animal in the area, after something huge ran out in front of a dog walker into the woods. The dogs refused to walk near to where the animal was and sat whimpering, then it shot out across the field into the woods. The police got a casting of some prints, but then it all went hush and never to be mentioned again. So this is my personal experience, and I am thankful that I no longer live in Essex. Name withheld. Huge upright canine encountered in Jefferson Township, Ohio. One night in 2005 we had crossed onto Stacy Road in Jefferson Township, Ohio, going between 30 and 35 miles per hour. Just after the first bend near a juniper tree, I saw something in my headlights. Squatting or sitting in the ditch was something bigger than a man and covered with fur from head to toe. It had a definite dog-shaped head and large ears. I watched in disbelief as we passed this thing, with my other three friends in the van also looking on in awe and hysteria. As it looked through the passenger side window of the van at us, its eyes had a yellowish color reflecting the moonlight. Its eyes and face were about level with the middle of the window. The head looked bigger than a human's head, and was definitely canine, the ears even more apparent in looking at it dead on. It was close enough that if that window would have been open, my friend in the passenger seat could have reached out and touched it. As we passed it and the rear of the vehicle cleared the creature's position, I saw it get up and cross the road behind the van. Its form blotted out the moonlight briefly as it stepped onto the road. Watching it in my side mirror, its third step carried it into the field on the other side of the road. By that time, my heart was pounding half out of excitement and half out of fear from the pure size of the thing. I got a very good look at it as it crossed, and it was definitely walking bipedally and digiti grade, and stood well over the height of the van, in the neighborhood of around 7 foot 6, if I had to guess. It would probably have weighed in the neighborhood of 400 pounds, based on the size of deer I have skinned and dressed out in the past. I couldn't tell if a tail was present or not, and couldn't make out a lot of real detail of the hands or forepaws, but I saw what I thought to be at least two or three fingers on one of the four limbs of the creature. 
The other thing that struck me was how wide its shoulders were. My shoulders are pretty wide from a human perspective, but this thing's shoulders were absolutely massive, at least 3 or 4 inches wider than my own, which are about 26 inches wide. Robert. Report of frightening cryptid canine encounter near Decatur, Illinois. The witness pulled out of her driveway onto Needle Road in Hickory Point Township, Illinois, already looking across to the west field for deer and the condition of the corn. Then south she went for about 300 yards and a left turn onto Ash Avenue for approximately one half mile turning south onto Northwest Lawn. Traveling south now, she was going extremely slow, no more than 25 miles an hour. Tall corn border both sides of the road. As she drove, she watched for deer and thought that in another month the corn will be harvested. The creature had appeared some 60 yards in front of me. It had emerged from the cornfield to the left east of me on all fours. I tapped the brakes. From the offset I knew it was not a deer, dog or coyote. I had started coasting, not knowing which way the thing was going to go. As I coasted, getting closer by the second, I could see it had stopped and started looking north, then south then north again. It started taking small steps, like in a slow motion movement, as if it were contemplating whether to continue or retreat to the field. However, it did not seem alarmed or in a hurry. Two small steps were taken, then it sniffed the ground or was listening or something. She continued, it kept sniffing all the way to the road's edge, some 10 feet turning its head continuously north to south, north to south. Now I was 30 to 40 feet from it. I kept tapping my brakes. At this point, it was at the gravel road edge and stopped sniffing, then the head turned again as if looking for traffic. It lifted its head and stepped upon the road. My vehicle is now at a crawl. At approximately halfway across the road it slowly began to rise. I've never seen anything like this. By the time it got to the other side, it was standing erect on two legs, walking. It moved at a snail's pace, again turning its head from side to side. I'm now less than 20 feet away. Approaching the west side of the cornfield its left appendage reached out and pulled back the corn, as if opening a curtain. As it went into the corn, I was all but even with it. Then it immediately disappeared into the field. The vehicle was at a dead stop. I even backed up, then pulled forward but could not see it. Her description was, straggly long hair, hanging two inches off its upper arms. Back hair was thick looking as if it was in need of a really good brushing. Its tail was about a foot long, straight and bushy. Ears were located on the side of its head, and the size of a human, teardrop shaped, with hair hanging off of them. The corn was seven foot tall, and this critter was at least six foot tall. It was so thin, like undernourished. The hair color was reddish brown possibly due to the sunshine, it was bright that day. My only memory of the eyes is dark. The muzzle was like a wolf. It never opened its mouth. Long hair was also hanging off its paws or whatever they were. I didn't get a look at the feet. It never made a sound and I didn't smell anything strange. It never really looked at me, more like it was looking through me or past me. I honestly was never nervous. B. A bright cryptid canine pack chase vehicle near Huinge National Park, Zimbabwe. The encounter I'm going to tell happened near Huinge National Park in Zimbabwe last year, while a father and son were on their way to Bulawayo late at night. The son was driving as he had recently got his driving license. They were coming from a housing project the father had won the contract where they were surveying the land. Naturally they were excited for the project, so the mood was extremely good. As they were traveling along there was a loud pop, and the car suddenly swerved to the side of the road. It was a blown tire. Luckily no one was hurt and the car wasn't too badly damaged. Where they had stopped was the middle of nowhere and seemed to be unnaturally silent. They set about to change the tire feeling nervous for some reason. That good feeling had gone away. They had left the headlights of the car on so as to have some light. With the light that was there they could see shadows moving around them, and the car they started hearing heavy deep growling. The father kept his cool for his son's sake, as he started freaking out just keep working on changing that tire said the father, and he frantically finished. They got in the car they saw four pairs of goldish yellow eyes just by the edge of the darkness. 
The sun floored the accelerator and they sped off, but to their horror those eyes started following them matching their speed. One of the creatures ran past the car only to reveal something they never thought possible. It was running on all four legs moving unlike anything they've ever seen. It looked at them and they saw the head of a wild dog, but with large fangs. It was built like a lean fit basketball player with well-defined muscles. They realized in that instant that they are being hunted. He pressed the accelerator to the end praying and hoping that the car was fast enough to lose them. As the car passed the creature it suddenly and fluidly stood up to reveal that it was 7 foot tall and had hands like claws. It reached out for the car before the car accelerated away from them. As soon as they knew they were somewhat safe the father broke down and cried. It was a mixture of relief and shock. CC. Bizarre canine like creature recently encountered in Durham, North Carolina. I am writing from Durham, North Carolina. I am not going to assume that what I saw was an actual cryptid, but I've spent nearly four hours trying to figure out what it could be, and I've come up with nothing except moose, and this is way too far south to have been a moose. It was probably 100 feet ahead of me, loping out of the woods like a dog would lope through deep snow. It was almost black in color, except for enormous reflective eyes that were the size of dinner plates glowing back at me. It had thin legs like a deer, but was easily twice my size, covered in long matted fur. It had the face of a dog and a tail that extended probably two feet behind it. It almost looked like it was grimacing as it moved, like I caught it in when it was vulnerable. It didn't slow down though, loping the full width of the street in maybe five hops before disappearing among more trees. I texted my neighbor, and he joked that it's a dog elope, but honestly I just want to know if anyone else has ever seen anything else like this. It was definitely not a moose and I don't think it was an elk. It wasn't a cow or beefalo. For those wondering, it had no antlers, the head was distinctly canine. It was in the backwoods near Durham Chapel Hill Road specifically. MX. This is Lon Strickler. If you like this program, it would help us if you would give it a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notification when we upload new first-person encounters. We have many more to come very soon. And by the way, if you have a suggestion or an experience of your own, please leave a comment.